Hi, everybody. My name is Amy Danella, and I thought with everyone out of school right now, some people might be missing story time. Um, I have four grown children, and when they were younger, and even today, they love having stories read to them. So I've picked out some of their favorites, and I'm going to read them and post them on YouTube so that you might be able to listen to them or read along with them um, and enjoy these stories as well. Um, I've never done this before. I'm a little nervous about it. Uh, I probably won't get the, the pictures all in the frame all at one time, but if you bear with me, I hope I get better as time goes along. So here's the first story, and the first story is called The Wishing Hat, which is an old, an old German story written by a woman named Annegert Fuchshuber. Um, she wrote it in German. She also did all the illustrations, which are really colorful and beautiful. Um, and uh, it was translated from the German language into English by another woman named Elizabeth D. Crawford. Um, so with that as an introduction, let's get started on The Wishing Hat. Um, by the way, the man in the picture there is the hero, the star of this book, um, and his name is Corbinian, uh, and he lives in an apartment on the sixth story, the top floor of his building in a city. We don't know what city it is, but he lives there with his cat. Here we go. The Wishing Hat. One morning, Corbinian was very surprised to find a hat on the table of his apart in his apartment, high above the roofs of the big city. Now, who could have forgotten that, he wondered. He hadn't had any visitors for a long time, except Aunt Caroline, but she never took her hat off. Besides, this hat was much prettier than any of the 23 lavender hats Aunt Caroline owned, and it was yellow, too. After inspecting it carefully, Corbinian decided that it must be a wishing hat. Most people know what to do with a wishing hat, but Corbinian had to look it up in his old book of fairy tales first. Then he carefully put on the hat, closed his eyes, turned the hat three times the way one is supposed to, and wished for an apple tree in his living room. He had dreamed of having one for a long, long time. Presto, there was an apple tree growing out of the flowered rug. It was full of ripe apples. And look how beautiful that apple tree is, guys. That afternoon, Aunt Caroline came to call. Of course, she saw the apple tree first thing, and she was quite upset. She clapped her hands and cried excitedly, now then, what's all this? What's all this? To calm her, Corbinian told her about his wishing hat. But he didn't calm Aunt Caroline at all. You simpleton, she scolded. You should have wished for a bag of money. I can do that any time, said Corbinian. When Corbinian got dressed on Tuesday morning, he saw to his great annoyance that his left sock had a hole in it again. Socks without feet would be much more practical, he thought. I have warm slippers anyhow, and socks without feet would never have holes in them. Quickly, he put on his wishing hat and wished for some stockings, up to the knees and red striped please, and without feet. They were on his feet before he had finished speaking. He hadn't even needed to bend over and they pleased him very much. You can see in this picture that Corbinian's got the sock with the hole in the toe, and that doesn't look very comfortable, does it? Right after breakfast, Mr. Snodgrass came to return a book he had borrowed from Corbinian. In greeting, Corbinian proudly stretched out his feet to show off his new socks, but Mr. Snodgrass wasn't very impressed with them. Perhaps the stripes bothered him, for he himself always wore gray. But Corbinian thought the stripes were just beautiful. Delightedly, he showed Mr. Snodgrass the apple tree and the wishing hat. You simpleton, said Mr. Snodgrass. You should have wished for a big car. 
I can do that any time, said Corbinian. On Wednesday morning, Corbinian woke up with a dreadful stomach ache. It was probably because of the 12 apples he had eaten for supper on Tuesday. He put on his hat and wished for a basket so he could send his cat shopping. The basket was there even before Corbinian had taken the, off the wishing hat. There was money in it, too. Corbinian put a note in it. One package of zwieback, half a pound of bologna, peppermint tea. And then the cat walked off over the roofs. By the way, guys, zwieback is a kind of dry cookie. You might have seen it sometimes if your parents gave it to babies so that they could gnaw on it without hurting themselves. That afternoon, the grocer came, panting up the many stairs. He wanted to know why Mr. Corbinian hadn't come shopping himself. Corbinian had taken a big cup of peppermint tea by that time and was keeping his stomach warm with the cat and a thick pillow. He was feeling much better. He told the grocer the secret of the basket, showed him the apple tree, and stretched out his feet with the new socks. You simpleton, said the grocer, laughing. Ha, ha, ha. You should have wished for a big house with a swimming pool. I can do that any time, said Corbinian. On Thursday, Corbinian was feeling well again. As a precaution, though, he ate only Zwieback for breakfast. Then suddenly he felt like going for a walk. Why else have a wishing hat, he thought, and he wished for an umbrella that could fly him to wherever he wanted to go. But for the first time that week, nothing happened. Corbinian put the hat on again and was just about to repeat his wish when there came a knock on the door. Hm. He opened it, and there stood his old black umbrella. Aha! So that's it, said Corbinian. He opened his umbrella and wafted through the window with it. He wasn't dizzy at all, so he took a nice sightseeing trip around all the church towers of the city. Corbinian didn't get home from his trip until late afternoon. He was so delighted, he did a little dance of pure joy. And then, one after the other, he hugged the umbrella, the hat, the cat, and the apple tree. Soon the woman from the fifth floor came upstairs. What an unbearable racket, she complained. Corbinian apologized politely and showed her the basket, the socks, the umbrella, the apple tree, and the hat. But the woman from the fifth floor wasn't at all sympathetic. You simpleton, she shouted. You would have done better to wash, wish for a modern kitchen. I can do that any time, said Corbinian. Because Corbinian was in such a good mood on Friday morning, he wished for a flute. He couldn't play at all, but he thought that the wishing hat could probably give him a flute that would also teach him to play. The flute was really very patient and practiced with Corbinian, first A and then C. Soon he could play cuckoo. He was very happy. See the little bird on the roof? Listening to Corbinian play the flute, I think he liked the sound, too. That evening, Aunt Caroline paid another visit. She brought two friends with her this time to show them the unbelievable apple tree. Corbinian made coffee and then, a little hesitantly, brought out his treasures, the socks, the basket, the umbrella, the flute, and the hat. But he couldn't make any impression with them. You simpleton! jeered the three friends together. You should have wished for a chest of jewels and a fur coat. I can do that any time, said Corbinian. The three old ladies each grabbed an apple and left. Corbinian was very angry. He put on his wishing hat, turned it around three times, the way one is supposed to do, and wished that the stairs to his apartment would turn upside down. Immediately, they turned themselves over, and from above, they looked very nice. Satisfied, Corbinian went back into his apartment. Look how cool those stairs look. And look, nobody can climb up them now to get to Corbinian. He sat contentedly in his armchair, 
under the apple tree, the cat on his lap. Now I really have everything I need, he said, and he threw the hat out the window. The End Here's a little information about the author. She was born and educated in Germany. For several years, she worked as a graphic designer for an advertising company in Munich. Since 1966, she has devoted herself to book illustration, and she has written and illustrated several books for children. She lives with her husband and three children in Augsburg, Germany. Now, she may not still be around because that was a long time ago, so we don't know where she is now. But that's the end of the story. And there are a couple of things you may have noticed in this story, maybe a couple of things you've learned. Unfortunately, I can't talk to you directly and hear what your thoughts are, so I'm going to share with you some of mine. First, you don't need to have a car and a lot of money and a chest full of jewels and a big house and a swimming pool to be happy. Sometimes you can be happy, and most of the time you can be happy, with just those things that that you really need and really want and that are very easy to get to come by. Secondly, you should never let people bully you into getting the things that you don't want because after all, what do they know? Um, so if people tell you things and they make you feel bad because they're telling you that you've done the wrong thing, you don't always have to believe that. Believe in yourself, just like Corbinian did. Anyway, that's the end of the story. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll be back uh, in the future with other books to read to you and share with you. I hope you're all doing well. Please stay safe and please stay healthy. And I'll talk to you all soon. And by the way, if any of the things that are going on around you seem a little scary, just remember they're scary for all of us, but we're all going to get through this together. Okay, take care, everybody. Bye.